channel of your peace. There is hatred, let me bring your love. There is injury, your pardon, Lord. And where there's doubt, truth. Dying that we're born to eternal life. The entrance antiphon. Truly the Lord has borne our infirmities and he has carried our sorrows. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Well, welcome here to St Mary's today. Um, it's uh, warm today but not particularly pleasant weather we're threatened with rain uh, muggy I think they call it um, and so a bit a bit warm a bit wet a bit claustrophobic um, but nevertheless uh, we're here together to worship I stand before an empty church just waiting to be ready to welcome those who want to come and make their individual private prayers when we open uh, again at the end of this week for a few hours each uh, uh, three days a week and uh, it's a strange sight as it always has been through these past few months now uh, but it's wonderful for me to know that you are there and I hope it's wonderful for you to be here with me and with one another as we worship God and thank him for his love and mercy. I'm offering Mass today for the soul of Leo Carroll, member of our parish. His funeral's uh, tomorrow and uh, that uh, hymn we started with, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace, is one of the uh, hymns which will be played at the funeral service, uh, which is taking place tomorrow at midday at the graveside. So we pray for Leo and for all those who mourn his loss. May he rest in peace. Amen. So now, as we celebrate this Mass together, let's call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, our refuge in every danger, to whom we turn in our distress, in faith we pray. Look with compassion on the afflicted. Grant eternal rest to the dead, comfort to mourners, healing to the sick, peace to the dying, strength to healthcare workers, wisdom to our leaders, and the courage to reach out to all in love, so that together we may give glory to your holy name. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Now we have our readings from Scripture, which, as always, have been prepared in advance by members of our parish community. A reading from the first book of Kings. After the death of Naboth, the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite. Up, go down to meet Ahab king of Israel, in Samaria. You will find him in Naboth's vineyard. He has gone down to take possession of it. 
you are to say this to him. The Lord says this, you have committed murder and now you observe as well. For this, and the Lord says this, in the place where the dogs lick the blood of Naboth, the dogs will lick your blood too. Ahab said to Elijah, So you have found me out, O my enemy. Elijah answered, I have found you out for your double dealing, and since you have done what is displeasing to the Lord, I will now bring disaster down on you. I will sweep away your descendants and wipe out every male belonging to the family of Ahab, fettered or free in Israel. I will treat your house as I treated the house of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and of Baasha, son of Ahijah, for provoking an anger and leading Israel into sin. Against Jezebel, the Lord spoke these words, The dogs will eat Jezebel in the field of Jezreel. Those of Ahab's family who die in the city, the dogs will eat. And those who die in the open country, the birds of the air will eat. And indeed, there never was anyone like Ahab for double dealing and for doing what is displeasing to the Lord, urged on by Jezebel his wife. He behaved in the most abominable way, adhering to idols, just as the Amorites used to do, whom the Lord had dispossessed from the sons of Israel. When Ahab heard these words, he tore his garments and put, put sackcloth next to his skin and fasted. He slept in the sackcloth and walked with slow steps. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite. Have you seen how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Since he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the disaster in his days. I will bring the disaster down on his house in the days of his son. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm, Have mercy on us, Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy, have mercy on me, God, in your kindness. In your compassion, blot out my offence. O oh, wash me more and more from my guilt and cleanse me from sin. Have mercy on us, Lord, for we have sinned. My offences truly I know them. My sin is always before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned. What is evil in your sight, I have done. Have mercy on us, Lord, for we have sinned. For my sins, turn away your face and blot out all my guilt. O oh, rescue me, God, my helper, and my tongue shall ring out your goodness. Have mercy on us, Lord, for we have sinned. was reconciling the world to himself and he has entrusted to us the news that they are reconciled. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory Jesus said to his disciples, You have learned how it was said, You must love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I say this to you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. In this way, you will be sons of your Father in heaven. For he causes his Son to rise on bad men as well as good and his reign to fall on honest and dishonest men alike. For if you love those who love you, what right have you to claim any credit? Even the tax collectors do as much, do they not? 
and if you save your greetings for your brothers, are you doing anything exceptional? Even the pagans do as much, do they not? You must therefore be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Be perfect, Jesus says, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. Be perfect. What on earth is going on here? Be perfect? How can we possibly aspire to this teaching of Jesus? How can we achieve this? Well, actually, it's very simple. You see, perfection isn't about trying. You know, like the teacher used to write on the school report, must try harder. Perfection isn't about trying. Perfection is about being. Living in Christ is not about our own efforts. It's about God's love. Entering into heaven is not something that we achieve, but something which he achieves. Goodness is not what happens through my hard work, but through the work of the Holy Spirit who works in us. Now this might seem odd to begin with, but once we start to think about it, then we realise, actually, yes, this is what the Christian life is already about, always about. Perfection. Because if heaven's for those who've done their best, done best, if heaven's for those who've achieved the most, if heaven's for those who've worked the hardest, then it'll be a place for those who are spiritually the strongest. It'll be a place of, not of humility, but of arrogance, of superiority, a place for human pride. I've deserved this. Can't be like that. In that scenario, there's no place for the cross and the manger. No. We become holy not through our works, but through his sacraments. We are made perfect, not by our own efforts, but because he is perfect. Be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. We move now to our prayers. and On Tuesday, we always make our, our thanksgivings. There are so many things in life to be thankful for, and we will move on to those in a moment, but first... We have some particular petitions which we need to make, which have come to us in the last few days, Uh, praying particularly for those who are sick, but other reasons too. We pray for Holly, member of our congregation, uh, a a young girl who's uh, had an emergency appendix operation, or at least was due to have one yesterday. I think she probably already had that. We pray for her that she's feeling a lot better once she gets over the operation and, uh, and, and uh, is uh, feeling very well. And for a family, of course, for this is a particularly anxious time. We pray for Lynn, who's in the uh, Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Birmingham for an operation on her spine. We pray that this may be a success. We pray for Christians throughout the world, that they may practice their faith in peace. Sadly, we know that many Christians suffer because of their faith It's said that there's about 11 Christians killed every day because they believe in Jesus. We pray for their safety, for their well-being and give thanks for their example and their fortitude. We pray for Keith, who's uh, in hospital, I think still in hospital, hopefully will be uh, fully restored to health very soon. For June Unet, who's currently in hospital after heart surgery. For Fred, also back in hospital. For Betty, recovering from a fall. For Claire, we give thanks. She's out of critical care now and she's still in hospital for rehabilitation. So we pray uh, for her well-being and for her recovery. We pray for Eugene, who's seriously ill after a brain operation. He's in Dublin. And we give thanks for Louise and the babies who've been home for a week now. Uh, Wonderful news. And we pray for all those who are sick and needy at this time. We make our thanksgivings. Uh, For the twins, we mentioned, who were born last weekend to Louise, the present woman babies continue to do well. For Sarah, who's had a successful operation. For those recovering from the virus after being very sick in hospital, Rico, Jason, Ian, Mark and many others. Thanks that a daughter's expecting a first grandchild. For Alex, who's gained a place in a specialist school. 
for Don, Bill, Les and Mabel who've all been in hospital recently and are now back at home, for someone who's got a new teaching job for September, for Gracie's brother who's had successful surgery, for Doreen who's doing well, for Monica who's got a grandson, for birthdays in uh, these past couple of weeks, for my mum June whose birthday was on Sunday, our daughter Wendy whose birthday was on the previous Saturday, also for Others during the month, um, more recent times, we've had birthdays, last couple of weeks actually, uh, Helen McGrath, Lynn Jones, Stella Lawless, Abigail, and Spencer, Barbara Webb. And those who've had many anniversaries during the lockdown, uh, Michael and Valerie, Shirley and Father Peter, me, Peter and Anne Tibke, Deacon Peter and Anne Tibke, Phil and Claire Burrows, Paul and Anne Hender, Pat and John Wilson, and I'm sure many others too. We give thanks for Mick's return to health, for Kath's recovery, for Gerard's uh, continuing recovery. And we give thanks for these broadcast masses and for all who take part in them in so many different parts of the world. And I try and list those parts of the world. Uh, perhaps we do a proper list and you can, we can add to it and see exactly how many different places there are. But we give thanks for all these. We commend ourselves to God's love. We ask for his many blessings upon us as we now turn in prayer to our Blessed Lady. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the gifts we offer in this time of peril. May they become for us by your power a source of healing and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so too also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Bernard our Bishop, William and David his assistants, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Leo Carroll, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Thomas More, with Blessed John Sugar, and all the saints who've pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. And now across time and space, let's greet one another in the peace and love of Christ. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Lord your Christ, we meet you everlasting. The blood of Christ, we meet you everlasting life. The communion antiphon, come to me all who labour and are burdened and I will refresh you, says the Lord.
Now I invite you to make your own act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you now and forever. Amen. Well, we're almost at the end of Mass now. It's, uh, thank you for so very much for being here, for joining in our prayers, for praying for all those who are in need and for giving thanks for God's many blessings. And there are many blessings. Even in the darkness sometimes of these difficult days, God blesses us in so many different ways. And let's never forget that. I think it's St. Ignatius who says that we should always begin our prayer and our spirituality from gratitude. And if we do that, if we spot all those wonderful things that God does for us, it makes us much more aware of his love and mercy and his purpose in our lives. So thank God for all those things. Have a good day today, wherever you are, whichever part of the world, whether it's in the evening or first thing in the morning, like it is for me, and uh, whatever things you've got to do, whether it's going to be a day doing very little or a day doing a great amount. May God bless you in all that you do for yourself and for others. And so now we turn to prayer and thank God for his many blessings and ask him to help us and to strengthen us and to inspire us that we may be perfect in him. Let us pray. O oh God, protector of all who hope in you, bless your people, keep them safe, defend them, prepare them, that free from sin and safe from the enemy, they may persevere always in your love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.